Want versus need. As a photographer or videographer, you're going to justify a lot of dumb purchases. We often refer to that as gear acquisition syndrome or gas. Not that kind of gas. In this video, I'm covering five purchases I've made in the last 30 days. And at the end of each one, I'm going to classify whether it's a want or a need. If you're like me, spending money stupidly, always buying camera gear, you're going to love this video. Before we start the list, purchase number five has a really, really cool backstory. You're gonna wanna stick around for that. All right, purchase number one is the Sony ZV-E1. Same sensor as the Sony FX3. That's the camera that is actually filming right now. It's in a lighter, compact style. It's got a little bit more updated AI features, has a built-in microphone, and it's actually half the cost of an FX3. Now, this is a camera that I purchased when it first came out, and I intended it to use, uh, to use it as a B-cam uh, for my work. But because I film extended uh, periods of time, like sometimes 25 to 45 minutes. This was a camera that I just could not rely on in a work setting because these have a tendency to overheat. Um, if you're shooting outside in the weather like I do, I live in Utah, the climate is pretty dry out here for the most part. Um, this is a camera that could also overheat in those conditions. Now, when I returned it, uh, I found myself missing this camera because I just loved the simple compactness of it, especially with this setup here, which is the uh, 20 millimeter f1.8 Sony G lens. This right here, this is something that you cannot do with the Sony FX3. This is so light, so compact, uh, you could walk around every single day with it and your arm's not going to get tired. You can record yourself at arm's length, you're going to get really, really wide. Um, there are some bodies that are as compact as the Sony ZV-E1, like the a7C2 or even the a7C, but you're not going to get the FX3 sensor. So, a content creator like myself on YouTube that wants to go mobile, walk outside, get the best picture possible, okay, in cinematic terms, right? This is the camera for the job, and so is it a need? Is it a want? It's kind of both. Um, if you start investing into gear to up your channel's quality, to give your viewer a better viewing experience, uh, then yeah, you can classify it as a need. So yeah, I needed a $1,900 Sony ZV-E1 for vlogging on YouTube. Totally justified. How cool is that? But yeah, I wanted a sensor and a compact body because Carrying around and hauling an FX3 and trying to vlog with an FX3 is no easy task. You need the Sony ZV-E1 if you want to do that. Purchase number two is the Nikon ZF. This is a beautiful blend between retro and modern. The body style is basically that of like the older Nikon FE1 or FE2 and to be honest, I mean, that's really the biggest appeal with this camera is this mimics the film cameras that I learned uh, when I took a photography class in high school. It literally feels and almost looks the exact same and you've got that old classic Nikon up at the top. Now, yes, you can roll with like the special edition kit lenses that they have for this camera. Um, but I actually opted for the 50 millimeter Voigtlander uh, 1.2 lens. It is manual and it is adapted on there. This is just a kit that I picked up to basically like bring out the joy of shooting again. Uh, this is the style of camera that I learned on. Uh, this feels very nostalgic and I literally dropped $1,800 just to feel what it was like to shoot with a camera for the first time again. I have like the Sony a7R5, I own the Sony a7C2 as well. Those are my work cameras. You have to kind of differentiate the feel between work and fun. So if I'm going out and just like hanging out at the zoo with my girlfriend or if we're, you know, going just downtown, like I don't, I don't wanna pull out an a7R5 and roll out there with like a 61 megapixel camera with the latest crazy lens and have like a $7,000 setup on me. I'd rather just roll out with a manual kit lens, something that's easy, something that's fun to shoot with, and that's why I got the Nikon ZF. So not a need, It's it was more so of a want, uh, but you guys will understand that when you start getting paid work and you're 
working all the time with cameras that those eventually start to feel like tools and you're going to want to buy things that are fun that just kind of like reignite, re-spark that love of photography or videography uh, that you had when you first started. Purchase number three, I think these are going to be something that you guys might go for yourselves. If you look into it, there's not a lot of video reviews out on these right now. I plan on making some, but check this out. These are the Polar Pro Light Leak lenses. Uh, they make these in Sony E-mount, Nikon Z, uh, obviously Canon mounts as well. Uh, but this is the uh, this is the 50 mil. I got the uh, 16 millimeter, and then I've also got the classic uh, 28 millimeter. Uh, these are basically lenses that I believe Polar Pro put out to uh, compete with. Uh, have you guys heard of like the disposable lens? It's a company called Dispo Lens. I actually made a video on them. A lot of people got mad at me because they thought it was going to be like a full on review video, but it's literally me just like hiking a mountain and then shooting with that lens. And a lot of people were like, dude, you didn't even review these. So I'm going to make another video uh, with the Dispo lens. But if you want to see the one that I'm talking about, I'll put it like right here. You can go check that one out. It's a little bit slower pace. Uh, you might enjoy it. You may not. But Polar Pro announced these very cool light leak lenses. And you can find videos on these. Basically, it is a fixed lens. Okay, we're going to remove the cap and the build quality on these. I'm going to tell you, like, th these are already way better than the Dispo lens. But to be fair, like, these are a little bit different. For pricing context, I know I'm just kind of, like, going everywhere. This whole pack right here was $319. It wasn't a lot of money. You get three lenses. So these are fixed lenses. And what this ring does here is it's not a, you know, focusing ring at all. This actually dictates the amount of light leaks that it lets in. So it kind of gives you, like, that nostalgic... Uh, filmic uh, film burn that you would get with like older film cameras or maybe even disposable cameras but these are going to be a lot of fun to shoot with and uh, these are definitely not a need but if you're like me and you like to try out new things and get new looks and you like to maybe review products maybe you're a creator yourself you want to shoot more content around items like this it's a great purchase and you never know you might have a client that might fall in love with the look of something like this or you could just keep this mounted on a separate body and just whip out when you're on a professional shoot and kind of experiment and get a different look or just like a different add-on for your client now do you see how i justified that want purchase kind of into a need that's the danger of being a photographer videographer you're always going to talk yourself into buying something because technically you could use it on a client shoot but honestly these are very very rad they look super super cool and there's a few videos out there again polar pro light leak lens go check it out some really really cool videos out by a few creators and the brand itself purchase number four this was a very sporadic spare the moment purchase i had a little bit of a credit at a local camera shop and i had some extra money to spend and i quite frankly got really really sick of waiting for the fuji film x100 6. Uh, i pre-ordered two of them it's been a very long time anyways if you guys know about that whole camera and how hard it is to get one i got pretty fed up and i consulted with a buddy of mine who shoots with a fuji film x100 v and he suggested that i get the fuji film xt-50 this has the same built-in simulations, film simulations, that you could find on the X100V and I believe the X106. I could be wrong on that. Basic difference between these cameras is that you can go ahead and remove the lens on this camera. It's still very compact. It's almost, I, I wouldn't really say it's the same size as the 5 or the 6, uh, but basically you're getting the same camera just with a removable lens and the lens that I opted for was the 23 mil now this camera is a PSC and I got this camera for fun this was definitely a want this is not in all a need but if you have ever shot with the Fujifilm specifically like the 5 or the 6 well I wouldn't know because I, I didn't own those cameras but if you see <laughs> the photos that everyone is posting what you get straight out of camera with these and just little micro adjustments or if you put the right film simulation in there, it's 
magical. Like, it just looks so good. I'm going to put up some samples and some photos that I've taken uh, just with this camera. Literally was driving out in the country, stepped out, snap, 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 snap. Kind of made them a little bit warm, added just a little bit of grain, but these are like easily some of the best photos that I've taken that I didn't have to put much thought into. And this little camera is just a beast. It's, it's just so fun to shoot, very compact. Uh, I'm going to be able to add more film simulations. Uh, there's a whole community out there where they share simulations and you're able to get some amazing uh, photos just straight out of camera like I mentioned before. It's a beast of a compact setup, very, very fun. And to be honest, I, I wanted to just be able to just kind of hand this camera off to, you know, my girlfriend or her niece or like one of my friends and just get some amazing pictures like that. I took this to a little gathering with friends. We were smoking cigars, just kind of hanging out. Uh, all our girlfriends were inside, like talking about whatever girls talk about. And I snapped these photos of my friends, black and white. Uh, it's, it's just beautiful, beautiful. That was a purchase uh, that was kind of spur of the moment. A super, super want, but I, I don't know, man. I, I just needed it. And finally, purchase number five. Now this only cost me $50, but this is easily the coolest thing that I've purchased in the last 30 days. And that is the Canon AE-1. And just look at the shape of this camera from the 1970s that I found on Facebook Marketplace for $50. I could easily turn around and resell this for about 200 to 50. This is the Canon AE-1 program camera. So actually, if you wanted to just kind of let it roll auto, uh, this is like a very consumer-minded camera that Canon put out where they just wanted it to be really easy and operable in people's hands. And yeah, I mean, everything is working. Now, the reason I think this is the coolest purchase is because it has the coolest story. I purchased this camera for $50, like I mentioned before. I drove about an hour west of where I lived, and I met an old woman named Cheryl, who told me that her husband had passed away the year before, and she was just kind of making some space around the house. Now, when she gave me the camera, she included a couple film rolls, and there were four total. And she said, some of them may have been shot, some of them are probably new and have never been used. So here's what I intend on doing. I've already taken the roles to be developed and I plan on taking any photos that may be Cheryl's memories back to her. Uh, she's unaware, she doesn't know that's going to happen. And I don't even know if there are any photos on those roles. Those memories belong to her. And if there's a photo of her husband, anywhere in those rolls, the $60 that I paid, whatever the number is going to be, I honestly owe it to her to take those back to her and make sure that those are in her hand. So the rolls will be ready in a week. I'm pretty excited. I don't know what's on those photos, but hopefully there are some memories that belong to Cheryl that we can get back to her. So make sure you're subscribed because once I get those photos back, we're going to open them in real time and see what those memories are. And we're gonna take them back to Cheryl. Anyway, those are my five purchases from the last 30 days. Let me know what you guys have your eyes on. Is there anything on this list that you guys want? Let me know in the comments. And again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, do all that crap. I'll see you guys on the next video.